Welcome to the series where I give you the origins and history of various topics in gaming. In this episode I'll be covering a personal favourite series of mine and one of Naughty Dog's earliest, Jack and Daxter. Jack and Daxter began development under the codename Project Y in 1999 after they'd finished working on Crash 3 Warped and joined the development of Crash Team Racing for the PS1, initially assigning just two programmers to work on it. For their next title they decided they wanted to create an entirely new IP that could take advantage of the much more powerful hardware of the newly released PS2. Despite going down the route of platformer again, much like their previous series, the goal was to provide a more story-driven, seamless open world without breaks, which was in stark contrast to Crash Bandicoot that was light on story and featured separate, self-contained linear levels that offered little in the way of exploration. When designing the characters, they wanted to appeal to both Western and Eastern audiences, taking inspiration from various cartoons such as Disney, as well as Japanese anime and manga. Jack went through a variety of concept art designs, with a number that looked distinctly more animalistic, before finally settling on the one we recognise today. While everyone knows Jack and Daxter as a duo, during the early stages of development, a third pet-like partner was planned that would grow with you throughout your journey. It wasn't long before this concept was scrapped, however. Interestingly, an entirely new programming language called Go was written by Naughty Dog co-founder Andy Gavin just for the creation of the game. Jack and Daxter doesn't take itself too seriously, telling a simple but enjoyable story that begins with Daxter accidentally falling into a pit of Dark Eco, resulting in him turning into an Otzel, a hybrid between a weasel and an otter. This sets the pair on a treacherous quest to find a sage that might be able to help change him back. With Jack being your typical silent protagonist, Daxter was the one to provide all the personality and humour, making remarks during your journey and even your deaths. The title ultimately proved a successful new IP for Naughty Dog and Sony, scoring an impressive Metascore of 90, with critics citing it as a light-hearted but great platformer, standing up with the best of its time. Some critics did know, however, that while great, it did feel unoriginal and did little revolutionary. Considering Jack and Daxter's success, you might think they'd keep things fairly similar for the sequel, but Naughty Dog did the exact opposite. Jack 2, or Jack 2 Renegade as is known in Europe, takes place a few hundred years into the future and gives us a much more mature looking Jack with a gruff personality and for the first time a voice to match. Whereas the original game focused heavily on collectibles, this time they are optional, instead opting for a mission based form of progression. Additionally, Jack has far more than just a punch and kick in his arsenal, sporting a gun that can transform and be upgraded over time, as well as a new dark alter ego that can deal out some punishing moves. Jack can now also hijack and commandeer various vehicles to quickly move around the city. Many of these changes were heavily influenced by the then recent GTA 3. Naughty Dog conducted a focus group that found children enjoyed more mature games of this nature. This almost pushed them to shelve the series altogether, however Sony's Shuhei Yoshida prompted them to continue it, which led to the overall more mature tone, pushing the series from its original E rating to T for Teen. Jack 2 scored slightly lower than the first with a meta score of 87, praised for pulling off such a drastic change in tone, however it was criticised for being too hard at times, with frustrating checkpoints that would often be few and far between. In November of 2004 we saw the end of the trilogy with Jack 3. Taking place one year after the events of 2, and following the defeat of Baron, Praxis and Kor, war has broken out in Haven City, with Jack blamed for it, banishing him to the wasteland. Jack is ultimately saved after collapsing by Damus, the King of Spargus, and in exchange for staying in his city, he must prove his worth. Throughout the course of the game you aren't kept within the walls of Haven City like 2, in fact you don't visit Haven City until a few hours in, spending a lot of your time in the aforementioned brand new areas, the Wasteland and Spargus. Gameplay wise it doesn't stray too far from the second, but adds 8 new morph gun modifications bringing the total up to 12, and like Jack, a new form that has its own unique abilities such as flight and temporarily slowing time. Jack now also has access to a range of different buggy vehicles that you'll use across the wasteland, with each having different weapons and abilities. Jack 3 scored the worst of the trilogy but still garnered a very respectable 84 on Metacritic. Critics praise it for further building upon the lore, introducing new gameplay mechanics and weapons, as well as a more balanced difficulty with more regular checkpoints. It was however criticised for being a little too similar to Jack 2. Jack 3 wouldn't be the last Jack and Dexter game that Naughty Dog worked on, as a year later they released Jack X Combat Racing that takes and improves upon the driving mechanics of the previous entry. Jack X tells a surprisingly well thought out story, continuing on a year after the events of 3, and sees the crew unknowingly poisoned with Black Shade, requiring Jack to compete and win in a tournament to gain access to the antidote. 
Jack Egg scored lower than previous entries, however still managed a decent match score of 76. It was praised for its graphics, online multiplayer and sense of speed, but criticised for its occasional difficulty spikes. Jack X was a competent racer and proved that Naughty Dog's success with CTR wasn't just a fluke. 2006 saw the first game in a series to be created by a different developer, and also saw the first that didn't feature Jack as a playable character, instead placing players in the hands of Daxter. Daxter was developed by Ready at Dawn and released for the PSP, taking place between the two-year period at the start of Jack 2 when Jack is experimented on and sees Daxter work as an exterminator. This gives Daxter a couple of different weapons at his disposal, an electric bug swatter that he uses for melee attacks, and a spray gun that shoots green eco and doubles as a former jetpack. Over the course of the game you'd receive modifications that would grant you new abilities. Dexter was a fantastic spin-off scoring an average of 85 on Metacritic and seen as one of the best titles on the PSP, praised largely for its great level design and tight controls. The next game wouldn't come out until the end of 2009 and sadly wasn't nearly as fondly remembered by fans as the other games. Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier was created by High Impact Games and released for both the PS2 and PSP. Interestingly, the game began production as a PSP exclusive under Naughty Dog alongside their new Uncharted title. However, they found developing both of them and working with the difficult hardware at the PS3 too taxing and abandoned the project, later handing it to High Impact Games. One of the game's most glaring issues was a change to Jack and Kira's image, as well as their voice actors, that resulted in them not feeling like the characters we all knew and loved. Couple that with a less open world, a lack of dark or light Jack, the inclusion of tedious dark Daxter sections, an awkward camera, and it paled in comparison to the first three games. Despite fans often choosing to understandably forget The Lost Frontier for its obvious flaws, critically it didn't score as badly as you would have expected, with the PS2 version garnering an average of 71, and the PSP version an average of 72 on Metacritic. Critics noted the poor camera and that the Dark Daxter sections felt tacked on, but overall said the game provided solid gameplay and great humour. Like with many other classic series from the PS2 era, the original Jack trilogy received a remaster by Mass Media Games for the PS3 in 2012, aptly named the Jack and Daxter Collection, although in Europe it was slightly renamed to the Jack and Daxter Trilogy. The remaster collection runs at 720p HD, has remastered audio, 30fps stereoscopic 3D, and includes separate trophy lists for each of the three games. Bringing the trilogy to the PS3 was no easy feat however, with Naughty Dog telling Mass Media that it was an impossible task, which they agreed with not long after. The team ultimately struggled to work out Naughty Dog's multi-layered, multi-textured rendering technique, not to mention the sheer amount of code and other complicated issues they had to decipher. In spite of that, they pulled off what they called a miracle, remastering the games a little in the way of bugs. The trilogy would a year later make its way to the PlayStation Vita, although the outcome wasn't nearly as refined. The collection achieved a meta score of 81 on the PS3, and while critics noted the games felt dated in some aspects, also said it was a grand adventure with plenty to offer and a faithful recreation of the classics. The Vita version on the other hand achieved a meta score of only 67, with critics complaining of clumsy controls and frame rate issues that hampered the experience. Since then the original PS2 titles were made available on the PS4 through software emulation, which did see Jack X finally make his way onto a new platform for the first time since its original debut. The PS2 emulation on the PS4 meant these games are now playable in 1080p as opposed to 720p at the PS3 versions, but ultimately look a little worse due to using the original assets, not to mention suffer with some performance issues. It's been a long time since we've technically had anything new from the series, so you might be wondering, will we ever get a Jack 4? Well, we almost did. Sometime towards the end of the last decade, Naughty Dog had begun the initial stages for a new title, although instead of a continuation of the original series, it appeared to be a reboot with a realistic art style and altered character designs, which can be seen thanks to concept art that surfaced a few years back. Jack 4 was ultimately scrapped in favour of The Last of Us, as the team felt restricted by the project due to how much of the world was already established and not allowing them to tell the story they wanted. So will we ever get more games in this series? Hopefully one day, although who really knows? Sony still owns the IP, and with Crash Bandicoot getting a successful revival, maybe Sony will see the demand is there and allow another developer to create another title. That's it for today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for a notification each time a video goes live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.